ಓಂಭೂರ್ಭುವಸ್ವಹತಸವಿತೂರವರೇಣ್ಯಂ ಭರ್ಗೋ ದೇವಶ್ಯಧೀಮಹಿ ಧೀಯೋ ನ ಪ್ರಚೋದ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಆಫ್ ಸಿರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈನರ್ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡೆಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ದ ಮೈನರ್ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ಅಮೃತ ಬಿಂದು ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಯಜುರ್ವೇದ ಓಂ ಮಾನಸ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಆಫ್ ಟು ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಇಂಪ್ಯೋರ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಥಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ is the impure while that which is without desire is the pure to men their mind alone is the cause of bondage or emancipation that mind which is attracted by objects of sense tends to bondage while that which is not so attracted tends to emancipation now in as much as to a mind without a desire for sensual objects there is stated to be salvation therefore an aspirant after emancipation should render his mind ever free from all longing after material objects when a mind freed from the desires of objects and controlled in the heart attains the reality of atma then is it in the supreme seat till that which arises in the heart perishes till then it manas should be controlled this only is true wisdom this only is true dhyan dhyana meditation other ways are but wrong or tedious it brahma is not at all one that can be contemplated upon it is not one that cannot be contemplated upon it is not capable of contemplation and yet it should be contemplated upon then one attains brahma that is devoid of partiality yoga should be associated with savra sound accent brahma should be meditated upon without savra by meditating without savar upon brahma that which is cannot become non existent such a brahma is partless devoid of fancy and quiescent or free from the action of mind whoever cognizes i to be that brahma attains certainly brahma a wise man having known that brahma that is without fancy without end without cause or example beyond inference and without beginning is emancipated there is for him then no destruction no creation no person in bondage no devotee no aspirant for salvation no emancipated person this is the truth atma that should be contemplated upon is one in the three states the waking the dreaming and the dreamless sleep there is no rebirth to him who goes beyond the three states the one bhutatma of all beings 
is in all beings like the moon reflected in water he appears as one and as many while a pot is being carried from one place to another the akas ether that is within it is not carried along with it as the pot alone is carried jiva within the body may be likened to the akas like the pot the body has various kinds of forms the body which perishes again and again is not conscious of its own destruction but he the jiva knows it always he who is enveloped by the maya of sound is never able to come to or see the sun of para parabrahma from the darkness of ignorance <coughs> should such darkness be cleared then he alone sees the non dual state parabrahma is sabda sabda kas what remains after the cessation of shabda vedas that is aksara indestructible <coughs> should be meditated upon by a learned man who wishes to secure a quiescence to his atma to vidyas sciences are fit to be known with shabda brahma and pra brahma one who has completely mastered shabd brahma attains par brahma having studied well the books the learned man should persevere studiously in gyana the acquisition of knowledge and vigyana self realization according to such knowledge then he should discard the whole of the books as a person in quest of grain gives up the straw though there are cows of different colors yet their milk is of the same color like milk is seen gyana and like cows are seen the different kinds of forms in the universe as he is latent in milk so is vigyana self realization latent in every being through churning always the manas with the churning stick of manas and the string of gyana prabrahma that is partless calm and quiescent should be brought out like fire from the wood i am that brahma that vasudeva who is sport of all beings who lives in all and who protects all creatures is myself that vasudeva is myself such is the upanishad om tat sat now i will explain all the stanzas one by one now i will explain each stanza om may he protect us both together may he nourish us both together may we work conjointly with great energy may our study be vigorous and effective may we not mutually dispute or may we not hate any oh 
let there be peace in me let there be peace in my environment let there be peace in the forces that act on me so this was the prayer first stanza the mind is chiefly spoken of as of two kinds pure and impure the impure mind is that which is possessed of desire and the pure is that which is devoid of desire stanza number 2 it is indeed the mind that is the cause of man's bondage and liberation the mind that is attached to sense objects leads to bondage while disassociated from sense objects it tends to lead to liberation so they think stanza number 3 since liberation is predicated of the mind devoid of desire for sense objects therefore the mind should always be made free of such desire by the seeker after liberation stanza number 4 when the mind with its attachment for sense objects annihilated is fully controlled within the heart and thus realize its own essence then that supreme state is gained fifth the mind should be controlled to that extent in which it gets merged in the heart this is jnana realization and this is dhyana meditation also all algies argumentation and verbiage stanza number 6 the supreme state is neither to be thought of as being something external and pleasing to the mind nor unworthy to be thought of as something unpleasant to the mind nor is it to be thought of as being of the form of sense pleasure but to be thought of as the essence of the ever manifest eternal supreme bliss itself that brahma which is free from all partiality is attained in that state stanza number 7 one should duly practice concentration on om first through the means of its letters then meditate on om without regard to its letters finally on the realization with this latter form of meditation on om the idea of the non entity is attained as entity stanza number 8 that alone is brahma without component parts without doubt and without taint realizing i am that brahma one becomes the immutable brahma number 9 brahma is without doubt endless beyond reason and analogy beyond all proofs and causeless knowing which the wise one becomes free stanza number 10 the highest truth is that pure consciousness which realizes there is neither control of the mind nor its coming into play neither am i bound nor am i a worshipper neither am i a seeker after liberation 
nor one who has attained liberation. Stanza number 11. Verily, the Atma should be known as being the same in its states of wakefulness, dreaming and dreamless sleep. For him who has transcended the three states, there is no more rebirth. Stanza number 12. Being the one, the universal soul is present in all beings. Though one, it is seen as many like the moon in the water. Stanza 12. Being the one, the universal soul is present in all beings. Though one, it is seen as many like the moon in the water. Stanza number 13. Just as it is the jar which being removed from one place to another changes places and not the akasa and closed in the jar, so is the jiva which resembles the akasha. Stanza number 14. When various forms like the jar are broken again and again, the Akasa does not know them to be broken, but he knows perfectly. Stanza number 15. Being covered by Maya, which is a mere sound, it does not, through darkness, know the Akasa, the blissful one, when ignorance is rent asunder, it being then itself only sees the unity. Stanza number 16. The Om as word is first looked upon as the Supreme Brahma. After that word idea has vanished, that imperishable Brahma remains. The wise one should meditate on that imperishable Brahma if he desires the peace of his soul. Stanza number 17. Two kinds of Vidya ought to be known. The word Brahma and the Supreme Brahma. One having mastered the word Brahma attains to the highest Brahma. Stanza number 18. After studying the Vedas, the intelligent one who is solely intent on acquiring knowledge and realization should discard the Vedas altogether. As the man who seeks to obtain rice discard the husk. Stanza 19. Of cows which are of diverse colors, the milk is of the same color. The intelligent one regards jnana as the milk and the many branched Vedas as the cow. Stanza 20. Like the butter hidden in milk, the pure consciousness resides in every being that ought to be constantly churned out by the churning rod of the mind. Stanza number 21. Taking hold of the rope of knowledge, one should bring out like fire the Supreme Brahma. I am that Brahma, indivisible, immutable and calm. Thus it is thought of. Stanza number 22. In whom resides all beings and who resides in all beings by virtue of his being the giver of grace to all, I am that soul of the universe, the supreme being. I am that soul of the universe, the supreme being. Om, may he protect us both together. May he nourish us both together. May we work conjointly with great energy. May our study be vigorous and effective. May we not mutually dispute or may we not hate anyone. Om, 
let there be peace in me let there be peace in my environment let there be peace in the forces that act on me i will further explain about this upanishad amrita bindu upanishad is the 20th among the 108 upanishad in the muktika upanishad order and forms part of krishna yajurveda this upanishad being one of the five bindu upanishads tejo bindu nada bindu dhyana bindu upanishad and brahma bindu is one of the 20 yoga upanishads the main teaching of this upanishad is gyana yoga it is small upanishad and contains only 22 verses the bondage and liberation there are two kinds of minds impure and pure the impure mind is with the influence of the desire and the pure mind is devoid of any desire when the mind attaches itself to the objects of desire it leads to the bondage where whereas when it is free from the influence of objects of desire it leads to liberation the seeker should constantly free the mind from the influence of objects of desire it is for the reason that liberation will become a reality only then the impediment for liberation or mukti is desire when freed from bondage the mind reaches the state of transcendence where self does not exist it is the mind that makes the bondage and it is the mind that liberates control the mind to reach that stage of transcendence this is wisdom as well as meditation one should not meditate this upon as it is a desire to get liberated at the same time one should not restrict himself to meditate upon as there is no other way to get liberated when one does this without any inclination becomes brahma o meditation according to amrita bindu upanishad one should combine this meditation with the mystic syllable om he should experience the state of transcendence beyond this syllable by the experience beyond the syllable there comes a state of non existence the very state is brahma that state is unbreakable non differentiated and uncolored on realizing i am that brahma one attains that state upon realizing the non differentiated indefinite seedless immeasurable and boundaryless state the wise one gets liberated in that state there is no creation or dissolution there is no one who is in bondage or who is novice or who is a seeker after liberation or who is liberated one this is the ultimate truth atma the atma finds itself at any of three stages waking dreaming and deep sleep when it transcends the three stages there is no rebirth otherwise it finds itself as one and many through life after life like multiple moons in the water the ether is always there inside the pot when one carries the pot from here and there one when the pot gets dismantled ether is not there likewise is the atma like the pot it assumes various forms 
on destruction one does not know where is either is similarly is atma atma surrounds itself with the darkness of the outer world of names and forms until the darkness is dispelled one could not reach atma only on the removal of darkness the oneness of brahma becomes known shabd brahma and transcendental brahma the sound of the mystic syllable is om when sound decays there exists the syllable if the seeker wants the peace of atma he should meditate on that syllable there are two techniques one is shabda brahma and the second is brahma that transcends he who has mastery over shabda brahma reaches the transcendent brahma for the attainment of transcendent brahma the seeker who has studied the scriptures should abandon the scriptures entirely like grain abandons the husk though cows are different in color the milk is always one color the seeker should look upon the knowledge of brahma as milk and people with various garbs as cows the real knowledge abides in the being after being as butter abides in the milk he should always churn with churning tool of mind in every being with the eye of knowledge one should attain the state of transcendental brahma that transcendent state of uninterrupted motionless and tranquility as i which dwells in all beings though all beings dwell in that i am that vasudeva that vasudeva i am so this is the brief explanation or you can say the gist of this upanishad om tat sat the text of this upanishad opens stating that it is the wise who after reading the test books repeatedly throw away the books and proceed to the practice of yoga with meditation on the silent invisible om in their pursuit of the brahma knowledge ultimate unchanging reality this lack of interest and esteem in learning or study of the vedas is found in other bindu upanishads states and may reflect ancient trend among yogins in the initial verses the upanishad differentiate the mind under pure and impure states and assigns its character as bondage and liberation further enquiry into the crux of the matter reveals the truth is realized within vasudeva which is of the one's self so i conclude this video at this point thank you for watching namaskar my dear friends thank you Nam